tonight's special guest, Nifty Breed. Mark Randall, Hoops for Hope. Elizabeth. Hey, you finally felt like showing up. Welcome to the Firewire at East Hampton Bowl. Come on in. Nifty Breed. instrument do you play? I'm Brian. I play the bass. Brian what? Brian Connors. So you have a last I name. I do. That's awesome. So weird. Uh, if you say so. Um, I'm Matt Marcus. I play guitar and I sing. Nick Lagnese. I play drums. What was your last name? Nick Lagnese. Lagnese. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> it's Italian? Yeah. Is it? Yep. Better not make those jokes. Might have uh, someone knocking on my door. It's, I'm very easy <laughs> to find. So... Uh, um, how old are you guys? How old are you? I'm 22. I'm 21. 20. Frank, I hate them all right now. <laughs> not, not only because they're so young, but they're more talented at this age than I am at my age. So that's really not cool. We're younger than you if we add up all our ages. So let's move on to the next question. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not a good question. Not a good question at all. So how, how long have you guys been playing together? Oh, uh, it's been a while now. I guess me and Matt started playing about six, maybe seven years ago. It's been a while. You're 22. It's a while. How can it be a while, a while ago? For me. It's definitely a while for me. So, so me at 45, I must be ready for a walker, right? Yeah, very close. Very. <laughs> well, all right, we're gonna throw this guy off. <laughs> so, um, you guys have an album out. It's a nifty breed. Keep quiet, which wish my ex-wife did. And um, 
Where can we get this? Uh, you can get it at stores, Amazon.com, iTunes. Uh, I believe it's on Spotify, RDO. Well, it's all over the place. How much is it? Uh, I think on Amazon.com right now it's nine fifty one plus shipping. Nine fifty one. I thought the penny became like a useless piece of coin. Without that penny, we wouldn't make any money. That's the most important part. <laughs> so that's what you get. You get the penny. Exactly. Oh, you know what? That makes total sense to me. That makes total sense. You guys really rocked it out. I mean, I was blown away when when you guys first came on, and I and I saw you. I was like, you know, a lot of bands out here they got talent, but I saw like you you were so young, and I was like. I'm sure they're going to be tight, but I was like literally blown away from the f first note once you guys got going. I, I mean, seven years you guys have been playing together. Now, you you replaced the old drummer, didn't you? Yeah, I, I just joined about a year ago. A year ago, uh, in May, it's it'll May. be a year. And um, yeah, I, I hit him up on Facebook. He hit me up on Facebook because we used to be friends a long time ago. And he was like, our drummer, I saw that uh, the drummer just quit. So then um, I was like, what's up? <laughs> well, since you're the guy that's been here the least, you're going to hold that up for everybody. <laughs> Just uh, don't put your face there. You want people to buy it, don't you? You want people to buy it. So if people want to book you for a venue, how are they going to get a hold of you? Uh, they can contact us on Facebook. Uh, they can contact One Alliance Records, Dan O'Brien. That would be the contact person. Or uh, on, on Facebook, what are they looking for? Uh, Facebook.com slash Nifty Breed will get to us. Okay. Yep, and, and that's where we are. At Alliance Records, is it? One Alliance Records. That's our uh, little label that's based around here. Okay. Do you, you have a phone number or an email or something you could give the folks out there? Uh, it's in the packaging. Wait, wait. Wow. Hang on, hang on. Uh, don't, don't call him right now, but it's 1631-664-1055. And what's his, right what's his name? Uh, Dan O'Brien. He's our Dan manager. He, uh started this like very little label we're just we're kind of like his pet project right now he's kind of just seeing how it goes and um we we got to do just as much work as we were before because it's all so new to everyone but he's right, right. he's getting us into places that we couldn't get ourselves and it's just yeah. it's really helping okay. you, you know i gotta say i've noticed like barefoot singers before <laughs> you know where they're wearing no socks no sneakers it's it, it's still not really common but i i've seen it more and more yeah. but you're in your socks what's that all about um I don't know. I have no desire to be barefoot on stage. <laughs> I used to play barefoot. It's, it's, a long it's complicated. Well, <laughs> well, drums, <laughs> drum, well, drums though, that yeah. makes sense because of the pedals and everything. Yeah, it's I, it's I, sometimes I, easier to be barefoot. Mm -hmm. But I, I've never seen like people in socks. It's, it's just uh, a comfortability thing. For it, you? it is. Um, I think I started doing it because I noticed. Uh, just, I do a lot of like p playing with my effects pedals. I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah. Doing that with sneakers, they. Sneakers kind of shift on my foot, makes it kind of difficult. When uh, when I take the sneakers off, I can just pretty much stomp the heck out of them. And the socks just kind of make it so I, my feet don't get dirty. Okay. <laughs> Very basic function. So your feet, so the socks protect your feet from getting dirty. What do, what do you do with the socks then? Do you throw them out? I wear them home. <laughs> <laughs> He's been doing that for years, though. He's always played in his socks ever since I've known him. Even before he had this whole big pedal board, it's just what he does. Yeah. So way back when, when you first oh, met him, way back, way back when, yeah. 2005. Oh, 2005. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. See, so, how come he knows and you don't? Uh, I was busy writing music. Wow. So, <laughs> wow. Right there. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, it's such a blur, because we got together in high school, and... Um, m most of the people who I know, once they get out of high school, it just it becomes all a big blur, and then you yeah, just focus right. on being an adult. You got to grow up sometime, and just forget about everything else. That's where the music came from. The music's from that blur of a past. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get them right now, Frank. Frank, I'm going to get them right now. You got to. Where are they from? You got to grow up sometime, right? Yeah. Uh, are you still living at home? Yeah. yeah but you got to grow up sometime. You still right. living at home. I <laughs> grew up there. Yeah. I, I have no choice. Sleep. I, I never stay at home. I never stay at home. I sleep at home. And then I leave for the whole day. It's just a place to crash. You just keep digging a hole. It's just a place, just keep digging it. It's just a place question, to crash. Next question. Yeah, next question. <laughs> so um, do you have anything booked, uh, any venues booked in the next? Oh, give it to us. We're looking to play. Uh, our next show is going to be, what is our next show? <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, April 6th. We're playing at a place called Mickey Malone's in Floral Park. Uh, that's, I believe it's 21 plus, so I don't know the cover charge though. And then um, on May 4th, May 4th, <laughs> we're playing the room in Brookfield, Connecticut uh, for the third time, I think. 
so that's going to be fun. That's, that's the name of the venue, the room? The room. Cool. It's, it's a club? It's, it's an all-ages venue, which is, apparently is more common in Connecticut than anywhere here. And it's, it's nice to play all-ages, because honestly, I'd rather play all-ages than a 21-plus bar. Well, yeah, because you would draw, obviously, more of a crowd. The, the, the wider the, the ages you let in, the bigger the audience is going to be. Just music deserves to be heard by everybody, even if you're a little kid. I mean, we, don't, we write slightly aggressive music. It doesn't mean it's hard to listen to. So we would love if, like, a, we've had, like, 10, 11-year-old kids, even younger, come up to us and say, you're really good, and that's always nice. You're not holding up the CD, man. <laughs> you're, you're failing. You're failing. Don't make, it, don't make them get another drummer. <laughs> Oh, not again. Oh, again. Oh, God. <laughs> so once again, I'm... Oh, Christ. <laughs> so once again, the Nifty Breed. Check them out on Facebook. You, and the web, you have your website. Hey, you don't know, not yet. Facebook. Better off on Facebook, or, or you could contact, uh, what, what was his name? Dan O'Brien. Dan O'Brien, who's uh, now everybody knows his phone number, so you guys are really in trouble now. Because <laughs> oh I know he's going to be getting prank calls now, or at least calls from people that want to <laughs> break into the business. So, uh, but you guys really rocked it out. I appreciate you coming down. Thank you very much. Thank you, oh, thank you for having us. Thank you. Oh, it was totally my pleasure. <laughs> I, still, I still can't believe how young you guys are, though. I really do uh, kind of hate you all just a little <laughs> bit. Down deep, just a little bit. I kind of hate you all. Hey, one day, one awesome. day you'll be as young as us. I, I'm, still, <laughs> I'm still trying to be as young as you, which is why I look this old. Because I can't be that young anymore. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens with that one. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Firewire after this. All right, welcome back to the Firewire. Right now I have Mark Crandall with Hoops for Hope. And what is that program all about, Mark? Hi, Ian. Thanks for having me here. Uh, we support youth athletics um, and development for community and, and people in southern Africa. Um, we're now reaching 180 schools where we provide uh, young peer coaches who are coaching sports and then also addressing a lot of the life challenges that kids face in communities there like HIV, gender equality, um, trying to keep kids away from drugs and alcohol and basically give them a real safe place to play, uh, be around great role models, and enjoy sports. Well, I do know that in, in Africa, uh, especially in the school system, it's, it's nothing like here. It's not like you go to school and there's a football field already there or a gymnasium that's got all the basketball hoops hooked up and everything. So I'm assuming that that's where kind of step in and, and you develop more than just sending them equipment, but you're actually building an area for them to play in, is that correct? Yeah, well kids are, are going to play no matter what the resource they have, um, but um, like you said, uh, sports and organized team sports are really a luxury for many places in the world. And um, we're here, you know, I grew up in Amagansett and went to East Hampton High School. You know, so much of our youth sports is driven by um, super moms and dads that are able to volunteer their time and come out and devote to a team. Um, the fire department gives you the little league outfits or the school supplies all the equipment. Um, in these schools, uh, that's just not possible. Um, the schools that we work with often have about 75 kids per class. Teachers are very over overworked and um, they're not going to maybe stay after school and coach a sport. Um, a lot of the, the families that we're, we're working with, uh, you know, they, they may just be single single parent households, um, employment, unemployment is, is about 50 to 80 percent. So um, it's just not right for volunteerism and being able to play sports. So uh, Hoops for Hope, we also do Soccer for Hope. Um, we involve boys and girls. Um, we target mostly the primary school to be able to um, add value and, and get kids in a safe place. Um, um, and then sports is no fun unless you have other kids to play. So we work in clusters. Um, of schools. Um, we partner with those schools that hopefully they can provide some of the resources to build some courts, uh, maybe add a few balls. Um, but we do a lot of upcycling from the U.S. Uh, we're able to bring over those tools that help kids play, balls, uniforms, and sneakers um, that they need to keep them safe and be part of a team. That was actually going to be my next question is where do you get the donations from? Well, uh, 
fundraising is is never easy um, and as a business model it's it's tough when you give your product away for free to 10,000 kids um, in the developing world so uh, we do a lot of fundraising uh, here in America through uh, what we like to call change agents or social philanthropists um, many a month we're kept alive by kids who do lemonade stands or do their own three-on-three -three tournament at their school um, we like to put it out to young people because they they tend to have the best ideas um, we do our Hamptons fundraiser we also do a lot of grant writing. Um, there's a lot of contests around social philanthropy that we enter, so we, we really have to uh, do anything we can to raise the funds to be able to sustain the organization that uh, reaches so many kids uh, every single day of the year. Right. And you also have a summer camp out here, isn't that correct? Yeah, I've run a summer camp um, since 1992. Um, it's called East Hampton Sports Camp, and we're now at Sport Time in Amagansett. Um, we used to run out of the neighborhood house. Um, in East Hampton, and now we're at the great facilities at Sport Time in Amagansett. So, um, you know, I was an athlete. Um, I grew up here with so many great coaches from Amagansett School, the McKee brothers, um, so many young people that have devoted their life to bring sports um, to young people here in this community. And uh, I'm just lucky to be able to, to continue being kind of a kid and playing sports with kids, but also being able to provide that opportunity uh, for so many kids where it's, it's not so easy. Does a portion of uh, the money that's being paid to the summer camp go towards the Hoops for Hope? Uh, well, I have a 10-week business of the year, so that's always helped to support me. Um, I'm actually a volunteer CEO for the last 18 years of running this nonprofit, so it's never been so easy to, to be able to sustain myself and my family um, in order to provide uh, you know, the resources that we do for, for these kids in Africa. Um, but we do get a lot of the kids involved, and we do have a lot of kids on scholarship at our summer camp. So um, we obviously value um, our local community, realize how hard it is sometimes to be able to live out here in the Hamptons. Um, so we, we try to help as many families as we can. Um, is there a website for Hoops for Hope? Yep, it's hoopsafrica.org. And we have an Instagram page, Facebook page, uh, uh, Twitter, so we're trying to reach everyone um, through social media to be able to get more supporters and engage people in, in our projects to see how they can help. And you can find all those links on the website? Yep, it's all right there. You can see lots of videos as well. Um, I think uh, you know we often don't know so much about Africa, and, and it seems like maybe what you see on Discovery Channel, but um, we work in some really amazing places with amazing kids and really devoted people. I was, I've just come back from three weeks in South Africa and Zimbabwe uh, with my daughter visiting our programs there, and it's just amazing to see um, our, our staff, how professional they are, uh, reaching out to these, these kids day in and day out. Um, running the teams, running the leagues, um, able to do so much, but on a real shoestring budget. Um, I wish we always had more. And you literally just got right back, because I heard you earlier, you said that you're still jet lagging, so you literally got back within the last couple days, right? Yeah, it's been a few days, um, but uh, I'm kind of past my bedtime here at 9 <laughs> o'clock at night, but uh, I'm going to push the limit here at the bowling alley. And uh, um, How did you get involved with the Hoops for Hope? Um, well, uh, I was growing up here in, in East Hampton, and uh, I signed up to be a Rotary Exchange Scholar. Um, so I was kind of attributed to a little bit of fate and destiny, because they, they guaranteed me one of my three choices of where to go. I hadn't traveled anywhere in the world. Um, so I put down France, Brazil, and Japan, and I ended up uh, being selected to go to Zimbabwe. Um, and I hadn't really thought of, of going to Africa, um, and so luckily it was, it was a nice turn of events. Um, it was in 1984 when Zimbabwe was a, a brand new country, so I was afforded the opportunity to, to go all over the region and uh, meet so many people, and uh, it's kind of changed my, my life and, and world. So. How many thousands of people do you think that you, your organization has stepped in and helped? Well, we're in our 18th year right now. Um, right now we're reaching about 7,500 kids on a weekly basis. Um, uh, the kind of power of our, of our model is that we're, uh, we pay what we call our all-stars. Our staff are called all-stars. So we have one person who's a community coordinator. Um, then they, in turn, train and motivate and manage a team of about 20 um, school school age people um, and teachers or sometimes parents who then run these leagues within uh, five to ten primary schools. So one person that's paid making a $200 salary is reaching close to a thousand people over the course of a week um, just through our kind of our volunteer model. And uh, 
um, and then we're able to motivate them, not pay these, these MVPs or our volunteers, the most valuable people, um, through some of the upcycled equipment that we're able to bring from here in the state. So they'll get a pair of sneakers, they'll get um, a uniform with, with a logo on it, maybe just a couple of shirts, but that's enough to, to keep them motivated and on the courts and um, in a place where uh, jobs aren't so plentiful. Um, we're adding a lot of value to their lives, almost right. padding their resume and giving them the skills of, of working with children. So we're now seeing a lot of the fruits, not only on the employment side, where the young people that we work with are getting jobs. I was just in a, in a restaurant, and a guy came up to me, and he was a chef, and he said, well, thank goodness that you were there in my community um, helping me play basketball every single day. I wasn't involved with drugs. I wasn't involved in crime when there's all these, these other social challenges there. Um, basketball and Hoops for Hope kept me on the right side, and, and now look at me, now I'm a chef. Um, and we're also seeing the fruits on the basketball side as well. We're, we're stacking the, the provincial teams, the national teams. We even have a kid um, from Zimbabwe who's playing in the Euro League in Germany. So, um, so you know, not only are we affecting kids and community uh, positively through, through health and fitness um, and just having great role models around them, but uh, we're also playing some pretty good basketball over there too. That's awesome. Can you uh, tell everybody the website one more time? Sure. It's hoopsafrica.org, uh, and then it's soccer for hope with the number four, soccerforhope.org, uh, where we, we just do girls' soccer, and our basketball is boys and girls um, equally. All right, Mark, I understand also that you're starting a new program in the Arctic. Is that right? Yeah. Um, we had a TV coverage um, during the World Cup time uh, for our Soccer for Hope programs that was seen in, in uh, across Canada on their national TV. And there's some communities in the Arctic region uh, with Inuit youth that face uh, really uh, um, extraordinary social challenges. Um, they have some of the highest rates of teen suicide in the world, teen pregnancy. Um, and we were asked to go up there and uh, use our model that we use in Africa um, to help these communities build um, their own sports programs. They have a lot of resources as far as schools and equipment, um, but uh, being a, a community that was formerly nomadic only 50 years ago um, and being put in one place and dealing with uh, all the social media. The kids are on, on Twitter now. They have satellite TV. The, the first world is, is pouring into their communities, but yet um, there's a real disconnect. And uh, um, so we've been We've been going up there. We've kind of been asked to do a lot of programs um, all over the world. Our email fills, can you come and, and help us out here? But uh, um, And here in North America, people have always said, you should be involved in North America. So we're, we're good at going to places that really need our help. Um, we are funded by uh, the state of Nunavut, um, which is a new territory only of, as of 1999 um, in this part of Canada, which is really just in our backyard. Um, above the Great Lakes, and uh, I was up there in, in January where it was mini, minus 50 degrees Celsius, um, but we were indoors playing playing soccer, and we've been invited to a lot of the community. Some you, like you, you would have to be indoors, minus 50 degrees Celsius. I, I don't think you can uh, do anything outdoors in that temperature. Yeah, it was a little bit of a shock for my system. <laughs> I've been, spent the last 20 winters in, in Africa, so, um, but the kids are amazing. These communities are really... Um, are worth investing our time into, and uh, it was really eye-opening for me. And I look forward to going back in August when the snow is melted and be able to see the land. Um, I appreciate you coming down to the Firewire. Thank you so much, Mark, and uh, everything you do, man. If there was more people like you, I think the whole world would be a better place. So once again, thank you very much for everything you do. We'll be back with more Firewire after this. And now, Firewire proudly presents the Lucy. Wake up, coffee, clothes everywhere. This will turn in my hair. Yesterday's party. Oh, the mess I made. I step into the shower, and it takes another hour for the water to warm up to me. Yeah. 
get older. More crazy days will come your way. Don't fret, don't fear, my dear, because darling, you know these crazy little things won't slow you down no more. Because darling, you know these crazy little things won't just go. Ooh. My head grows tired and my feet grow weak. I've been jumbled up in lies that are keeping me from sleep. I've been trying to move on, trying to look at you. Another morning star, expecting me to start anew. And I go, ooh. down no more, cause darling you know these crazy little things won't just go ooh, ooh, ooh just keep me saying ooh Alright, so we're back on the Firewire and I have the Elizabeths here and uh, what's your name? Elizabeth Vespi, Elizabeth Walker and so that's where we got the Elizabeths from, apparently, right? And uh, you both go to East Hampton High School, right? Mm -hmm. And what grade are you in? I'm a senior. I'm a junior. Okay, so you guys are a year apart. Mm -hmm. Where did you guys meet? Uh, in a biology class. <laughs> and how did you guys decide to get together and start doing music? Um, her dad actually was like, I need someone to play for this. And she yeah. needed a singer, and she knew I could sing, so. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of just thrown together at the it last just minute? Happened. It just happened. And it still sounded really tight. You guys really sounded good. Oh, well, that was a year ago. It was a year ago? Yeah, now we've just been going ever since. Oh, okay. So, you guys do anything local as far as playing anywhere, or it's just kind of you guys get together and jam? Uh, we've played at a couple of local venues, like the Stephen Talk House, and like the Maidstone Pavilion, yeah. and everything. Yeah. Or like and at our high school. At our high school, and like Levittown and stuff, like yeah. Up Island, too. Cool. Cool. So, is music something you guys are going to keep pursuing? Uh, not as like a career, but as a hobby, definitely. Okay. What about you? The same. I would same just do thing. as a career. I mean, as a hobby, <laughs> not a career. So for your career, what are you looking to, to do as you get older? Going to go to college for what? Uh, I don't know. Just going to go with the flow, see what happens from there. Frank, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> screwed. Uh, what, have you, what are you choosing for a career choice? I don't know. That's a good question. All right, great. I appreciate you coming out. Thank you so much for playing with us. We'll be back with more Firewire after this. Thanks for stopping by for this episode of the Firewire. I love you, Jake. Take care of your mom. For now, get out. We'll see you next week. Welcome to Firewire. You're watching Firewire. Hey, I'm Tom Mealy. I'm with Madhouse TV. This guy just walked up the steps. I don't know. What the, what, what is the story with you? I'm Come comedian on. Frank Prince. Hey, what the hell do you want here? I want my own reality TV show. You think you're funny enough? Hell yeah. Well, how much money you got? Short arms and deep pockets. You think you can make it? I'm the Myron J. Show. You think? I think. All right. I know. We're going to give him a shot this spring here on Madhouse TV. Tune in and wait for... Frank Prince, the Myron J. Show. There you go. We'll see you this spring. We've got a ton of new shows coming up. My pal Frank Prince, great comedian. Wait to see him. Tune in to Madhouse TV this spring. Have a wonderful day. 
You know you already want a Toyota, but when you want more from your Toyota store, you want Smithtown Toyota, where every Toyota comes with Smithtown Toyota's Toyota for Life program, giving you lifetime New York State inspections, lifetime 10% discounts on all parts and service, two years of complimentary oil changes, two years of scheduled maintenance, and more, all at no cost to you, plus low clear-out deals on every Toyota in stock. Get more from your Toyota store. Hurry to Smithtown Toyota. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing.